Always do sober what you do drunk. And it'll teach you to keep your mouth shut. Hemingway said that. Yes, he did. And he said it to me. I don't want you to go to Canada tomorrow. It's for the podcast. It's what I do. I travel around and I interview weird or interesting people. So look out, you crazy Canucks. Wandering Wallace <laughs> takes a raunchy road trip up to the Great White North. Hello. I'm an old man who has enjoyed a long and storied life at sea. And after eons of oceanic adventure, I know I do not wish to spend my remaining years alone while I have such stories to share. How far is Bifrost from here? It's about two hours from here. It's about two hours away. I hate American guys. Good evening. It's nice to meet you. Could I interest you in some tea? So what happened after the boat sank? I was alone. And then something very swift and frightening moved by me. A walrus saves your life? The walrus is far more evolved than any man I've ever known. Present company included. Thank you. You're welcome. Would you? Huh. Would you? There, there. It'll be all right, Mr. Tuff. He hasn't called me in three days. I'm worried. Why are you doing this? Are you really mourning your humanity? I don't understand. Who in the hell would want to be human? smiling for pictures over there and as I was I, it was a very surreal moment because I was screaming I could hear myself screaming in the background and I'm posing like this is that like your <laughs> internal monologue yeah, yeah. so I've, uh, you've just seen the, the trailer I've got to ask you guys is this the strangest movie you've ever been involved in and you've been the voice of Alvin so think about it and Herbie Fully Loaded which was I think it's just a little stranger yeah uh, I mean what did your agent say when you got this offer for uh <laughs> to be in this movie. Uh, I made the mistake of reading it at 12 o'clock at night, mm. and I couldn't go to sleep, and I became obsessed with this movie. I just knew I wanted to be a part of this crazy, very unique film. It's definitely not a remake of anything, yeah. so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's its own thing. <laughs> yeah, I read it, when I read it, I was like, oh, great, another human walrus movie. <laughs> Here we go. But I decided to do it, and, um, and I knew I would do it regardless of what it was, because it was Kevin, and I loved working with Kevin, and, uh, and, I, and, I, and I was also ex kind of flattered to, that he wanted me to do it, I thought, just that, that fact. So I called my agents, and I said, Kevin emailed me the script. They said, great. They, I sent it to them, and uh, they, they were, it was the first time they were really opinionated about me not doing it. They were like, <laughs> we want you to work. We want you to do a movie, but not this one. But not this one. Yeah. yeah. But you overrode the... Uh... Agent. They're my former agents, yeah. Ah, there you go. Um, it's actually, you spend, Justin, a great deal of the film um, restrained in one way or another. So there's not a lot of movement, but at the same time, it feels like an incredibly physical performance. It, it felt that way. It felt, yeah, it was exhausting. I'm, I'm in, uh, for about half the movie, I can't, you, I can't speak or uh, use the rest of my body, really. So uh, I don't want to give too much away, but... <laughs> You can you can, but there's a you can use your imagination. Involved. Yeah, there's a walrus involved, and uh, there's barking involved. There's barking. There's a lot of guttural, primal animal sounds. So uh, yeah, it was there was something liberating about it, though, about not about just using that. You know, um, I don't know. I don't know how to to explain it. It was very surreal. I mean, was there something? It was written directed by Kevin Smith, obviously of Clerks fame and others. I and mean, what did he tell you guys about how to? create this environment that is so surreal and yet comic. Uh, he, he kept it pretty, I know this sounds strange to say because it's such an out there premise, but he kept it pretty grounded, Kevin did, and uh, he insisted that we 
play it pretty, it's played straight. Yeah. Um, so it was, it was just committing to, to, to the, uh, it didn't feel absurd when we were doing it. It felt like now he's just in this situation. It was like, it was doing any other horror movie or any other movie at all. You just play the, you know, the stakes and where you are. I mean, this, this could happen, God forbid, but <laughs> I mean, it could. It's not, it's, in Canada, yeah. it could happen. Yeah. It, <laughs> it's actually, it, it, it's somewhat based, the inception of it is interesting because uh, it was based on, Kevin does these podcasts, he does five of them and they're really entertaining and, uh, they, and they talk about weird things in the news and human interest stories and things that just come up and, and uh, there was a story out of England, this guy had taken out an ad in a, in a Craigslist type listing where he was looking for a lodger to come stay at his place and he was offering free room and board and the only stipulation was that the person had to dress as a walrus for two hours during the day. This was true. This was in Gumtree, it's called, in England. And, and I guess all these people answered it. Enough people answered it to the point where the guy had to post another ad saying, thank you for all the submissions, but I've chosen my walrus <laughs> and, and we, uh, there's no more room for anyone. So Kevin was so intrigued by that that he thought, God, that this really happened, that he, he conceived of it as this kind of like a British Hammer horror movie where um, instead of just wearing the suit for two hours, this, this guy's making you kind of wear it forever the rest of your life. So, uh, yeah, that's right. I, I wish came. there was a Beatles reference here for the walrus, but they're just... You know, yeah. I just did a show, and, I, and he said, welcome, Justin, and I said, goo 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 -choo. And he said, ah, oh, and he kind of called me out for <laughs> taking the low-hanging fruit, so I didn't want to do that. No, you got to take it once. Yeah. But we can put it to bed now. Yeah. Okay. No more. Um, you know, Genesis, so much of, of both you guys, the, you, if you watch inside the actor's studio, you'll know that so much of acting is reacting, right? And you, in particular, have a really challenging job. You're opposite Johnny Depp a great deal of time, who's completely transformed. He's not in the trailer, but transformed in this way you would never recognize him. He's hysterically funny. I don't want to give too much away. But I, he plays my mustache. He plays Johnny Depp. He's incredible. You would never know. You would never know, except the earring. Um, how do you sit there opposite Johnny Depp being hysterical and at the same time, we were talking about this in the green room, you know, give him what he needs but still not <laughs> insert yourself into what he's doing. Yeah, you don't want to steal the show, I mean, yeah. come on, you can't overstep your boundaries. But it's just a wonderful thing, you just, um, you got to give him something so, I mean, you, you, he needs someone to react off of. Um, but at the same time, I was just thinking, this is the most bizarre character I've ever seen in my life because he, he's like cross-eyed and I didn't know where to look and that actually helped me. Um, <laughs> he's kind of like a French-Canadian Columbo. <laughs> yeah. That's what he's doing. Was. There was an eye that was kind of... It was of a wonky eye. <laughs> yeah. So I just... Um, sort of like the tourist. It's kind of what he does in the tourist. <laughs> so it, it helped uh, in the strangeness and in the reacting part and... Um, uh, I, it was it was very surreal, very surreal to be acting opposite him. Well, do you have a story of that experience? I mean, he's he's great. Did you get an inkling of why he's so great, or something that you can emulate for yourself? Um, I mean, Haley and I would just text each other, and we were just like, "Are we the coolest people in the world that we just went through this?" Um, but he was so sweet. He was so so humble, and. Um, he referenced movies like if we've never seen them before. He would say, oh, I, one time I worked in this movie called Pirates, and I was like, no way. <laughs> Pirates of the what? No. <laughs> I had Bono do that to me once with Joshua Tree. I'm like, really? Oh, my God. Really? This little album called Joshua Tree. Yes, thank you. Very I'm in a little band called The Beatles. <laughs> I don't know if you heard of them. Uh, yeah, he was disarmingly down to earth yes. when I met him. He was just like, hey, hi, I'm John. He was just like very, oh, it's nice to meet you. Like this is, he was really cool. Really cool. Yeah. Well, you had a similar thing also with Michael Parks, who has these long speeches. Yeah. He's tremendous, very a big character, and yet kind of reserved in his way. How, what are you, and some of the time you're completely nonverbal. What are you, how are you interacting with that? Uh, Michael and I had a very, we tried to, I think we were, and it sounds pretentious to say, but we, 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 did kind of stay in character in, in, in a way, like when we were doing that stuff. So he, um, he kind of kept, stayed in his corner, I stayed in mine, I, I loved him. And we'd kind of come together at the end of the day and talk about things. And, uh, but he, during the walrus stuff, there's certain scenes where I'm, I'm, I'm in a pool and I'm, in a, I'm, I'm not really able to move, and I'll just say that. Uh, I don't have full mobility. And he was very concerned for me. He, uh, 
I saw him in those moments. I saw moments where he was really, you know, looking out for me and making sure that I was okay. And, and, and so he would check in like that. There were moments where he would, he would check in with me. He's an incredible guy. He's had, I don't know if you, Michael Parks, you know him, but he's, uh, he's a real, like, actor's actor, you know, and, and directors love him. Quentin Tarantino um, loves him so much that when he was growing up, he made a mixtape of, of Michael Parks' performances. Because Michael's one of those guys that, it's a long story, but something happened back in the day where he, he used to be like a, he was an Adonis. You know, Michael was like an incredibly good looking guy. He was like, he was like the Brad Pitt of the 1950s and, and had kind of like the swagger. He, he was like Garrett Hedlund a little bit. And, uh, and then something happened where he, a studio executive got mad at him and he, there's some story in there, but uh, he, so he stopped doing studio movies and he started doing parts where he could because he loved to work. And so he would do an episode of The Love Boat or, uh, he, you know, you know I don't know about Three's company, but just here and there, he would do little things. And, and people like Quentin Tarantino, who loved movies and loved acting, would notice him and they started, he would tape him whenever he was on, he would pop up in one of these movies. So Quentin Tarantino literally has a VHS mixtape of, of uh, Michael Parks. Might actually explain That's a awesome. Lot. I didn't Isn't know that. Cool? that. Yeah, he's a legend. And, he, and Kevin loves him as much. And, and so Kevin wrote the part for, he wrote the movie for Michael. And Johnny, I think, it, I, I think agreed to do the movie mostly because of, of Michael, because uh, Johnny loves him as well. So if you want to see really good acting, yeah, yeah. check out Michael Parks. Both Ooh, of them. Yeah. Um, tell me, without saying again too much, part of the part where you are in the water and restrained and unable to move, there's a great deal of uh, makeup, prosthetics involved in that. How long were you in this state and what was involved in getting you into it? Um, it was it. I was it was about four and a half, five hours of makeup uh, to to get there, but then to stay there, it was constant. You know, people coming over and checking. And, and again, I I I don't I hope this doesn't sound too cri too cryptic. I just don't want to ruin some of the fun and the reveal because there's a great reveal. Um, but it was a process. It was weird. My my dog saw me at one point in 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 the in the getup, and uh, he freaked out. <laughs> Really freaked out. Like, I felt terrible. And I called him over. I was like, hey, come here. I don't, know if you, I don't know if you were there I for that. There for and, and we're in this enclave, and there's a bridge that separates, that connects to the... And he was halfway across the bridge, and... You know, like, he saw me, and it was like a real Scooby-Doo moment. <laughs> and you Animal saw cruelty. The... I hope Peter's not watching. <laughs> but you saw the future of the movie right there, what audience... Yeah, I was like, I hope that's what, how humans react. <laughs> I'd like to open up to questions uh, from the audience. Okay, thank you. Right, thank you very thank much. You. For those of you who haven't seen the movie, I know. Well, I mean, actually, I'd like to talk more about Kevin Smith while you guys think. Um, uh, and, and working with him, I mean, yeah. you said that he, you know, he said to keep it pretty minimal, but, you know, he's got to tell you something in advance of what he's going for. What is yeah. his, you know, and, and, and look, playing comedy, people say, well, just you play it straight. Right, there's no way to play comedy. So what, in his sort of movie, which can be over the top in ways, I mean, how yeah. do you approach those things? He, he really just um, wanted you to have fun while you were doing it. He didn't take himself seriously at all, <laughs> clearly. You want to hear that about a director. He was really... This good. isn't a big secret, but Kevin, uh, and I, there's no, like, other, I don't know how to say this other than to just say it. Uh, Kevin smokes a ton of weed. <laughs> Kevin smokes all day. And uh, like Surprise. Seth Rogen, he is, it makes him more productive. And oh, yeah. I think, yeah, I, I smoke, or I've heard of people who smoke, and I, <laughs> and I. Your, your cousin. Your my cousin, cousin I have a cousin who smokes a lot of weed. And, um, you know, and you get these great ideas, these incredible, uh, I've heard, and I, and, and, and I, or I would, if I smoked, w write them down. I write down these ideas, like, yeah, that would be amazing, that would be amazing. And then the next day, you wake up, and you go through your notes, and like, what was I thinking? You know, they're all like, one after another, of like, what? That's ridiculous. Kevin doesn't have the next day. You know what I mean? <laughs> so Kevin, the next day, he just, he, he just started smoking again. So he's like, yep, still a great idea. <laughs> so... <laughs> and Roll it. <laughs> which brings us to this movie. I mean, that's how the movie was... So now that gives you a little indication of how the movie was conceived. So in terms of tone and, like, modulating, like, what he was going for... It kind of was all over the map. I mean, once Johnny shows up and he's doing this, like she said, this like French Canadian Colombo, it's like, wait, what? That, I thought this was like a, 
I thought this was a little bit more serious, and then that gets weird, and then he gets serious. I, it's it's all over the place. So, but he, but it's true. His the the one uh, very, real deliberate thing that he makes sure of is that everyone's having fun. Yeah. He is just above and beyond. Like that's 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 the mo. And if he ever sobers up, he just sits on the couch. Yeah, he, he's constantly. No, he's. I can't imagine. He's just this productive stoner, and he's actually <laughs> lost weight too. As a, which is, it's, he's a really. It's so much so that like, and and the movie was conceived in, in such a way that uh, there's a there's a medical marijuana dispensary in Studio City that has created. They've created two strains of marijuana to coincide with the movie. But this is true. One is called White Walrus, and it's kind of a more mellow, you know, ease your way into it, and that's. Were I to smoke, that's the one that I would imagine would be would be nice to smoke before you watch this. And then there's another one called Mr. Tusk, which is more intense apparently. Uh-huh. And I was like, I was saying to Kevin, like, wh why would you want that to make this more intense? And he's like, I don't know, sir. I'm gonna try that. I'm looking forward to that experience. This is a whole new realm of of of, of product marketing tie-ins with. Yeah. Pepsi will do it next. Uh, anyone want to jump in with something? Oh. Yeah, right over here, please. Oh, uh, hey, uh, speaking of Kevin Smith, what are some of your favorite movies that he's made besides Tusk? Favorite Kevin Smith movies? Mallrats. You love Mallrats? I love Mallrats. Yeah, Mallrats. <laughs> I, um, I, uh, Chasing Amy was always, when I was uh, in college, that was like, and still to this day it really holds up. I saw it recently and, and I love that movie. Um, he's just great with dialogue, he's great with uh, the capture. So great. And, 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 but this is a lot different. I think you'll find, you'll be surprised. I think, because uh, I, Kevin, he's, in a self-deprecating way, he's always, he's always joking about how he, you know, he just sets up his shots. They're very static. He has just two people sitting across talking to each other. Clerks was very, um, uh, very much that, it's simple in camera. And this is a lot more, there's more movement to the camera. There's more, it's more stylized, I guess. So it's a real departure for him. Do you guys ad lib off that dialogue, or I mean, these long speeches? Do you just this guy? You can't. You can't even. <laughs> this guy. You know, this guy. Honestly, he's probably the best um, improviser yeah. I've ever seen. Yes, that is true. I I've ever seen. I'd heard that. Yeah. See, um, that was just an improv. You are something to watch. You're like. That's brilliant. Oh, okay. So then you sit and wait and watch you, and you're like, oh shit, I gotta talk next. When <laughs> when do I? But wait, you're. You're on to something right there. Keep doing that. So he's terrible to work with, is right. right. He goes off on tangents that have nothing to do with the movie. No, you want you. I, I wish. I no. wish I could do what you do. No. Start mentioning seals. It's really it, yeah. Well, there, there were certain uh, yeah. There were moments that for improv. There were there was some uh, oh, yeah, opportunity yeah, for yeah. it, and, and it was. And Kevin is. I did a movie. I did Zach and Mary with him, and um, not listening to the, the question. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he checked out. <laughs> it was a meaningful question to him. Most boring. Now it's. <laughs> How is yeah, he going to no, tweet it okay. otherwise? <laughs> um, uh, anyway, I did this. I did a movie with him, and it was almost all. It was with Seth Rogen, and he is uh, one of the greats. Seth is really? like. Oh, Seth is just. Uh, it's like facing off with Muhammad Ali. He is like so quick and smart, and also a stoner. So uh, there's a, a theme. Do you, do you sense the theme? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, Ke Kevin would just let us go for for so long that both of us was just kind of run out of run out of steam. I just did an episode of Portlandia, and uh, that was another uh, genius. I think Fred Armisen is a, I think he's a genius. I hate when people overuse that word, but and I try not to. But he is. It's all improvised, and he goes to these strange places. But but Kevin always recognizes uh, that you have to stay on story and bring it back to. So whenever we improvise, if it if it goes off the rails. I remember Vince Vaughn, who, again, another incredible improviser, would always say that to me and say, you know, because he was always careful not to go looking for jokes. Some, some actors you see, they go looking for, they try to make fun, they find funny things. And, but Vince would always stay on point and, he, and he'd say to me, he'd say, you know, you always play the intention of the scene. You can't go looking for the jokes. <laughs> Left and right. If there's a funny right there and you stumble across it, that's fine. You can do it. But, you know, you don't want to go grabbing for things. Uh, that was an important <laughs> Did you want to? Awesome. Sure. 
Um, thanks, guys, for coming. This is really exciting. Oh, Thank you. Thanks for being Hello, here. Hello, I'm here. Um, so I was just wondering what you guys think about Kevin's transition from doing things like Clerks and Mall Rats and all those great, hilarious movies into these darker things like Red State and Tusk. Like, I don't know much about what he has next, but I just wanted to know what you guys thought about that transition he's made. It's a good question. A very good question. What do you think? Um, he was saying things like um, Ma Rats and Clerks are the stories that um, he knows, and then Tusk and Yoga Hoshers, what he has next are the movies that he creates. This is just another world of Kevin. Yeah, he, I think that he, he said he was a little burned out on, on uh, <laughs> creatively on, on doing movies that, that, he, that are familiar to him, that, that stories about his life. You know, he said, he said Clerks was his life. He was when he was working there, and he was just talking about pussy and Star Wars. Those are his words. His words, I don't speak like that, to quote Kevin. Uh, I would say vagina in Star Wars instead. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and, and he said Chasing Amy was about, you know, he went through that experience he, this, with this uh, bisexual woman. And uh, I, don't, I don't know if that, I'm sure that's out there. Everything about Kevin is out there. And then I think he got a little jaded when he, success I think jaded him, which it can do. And, and he, he speaks about, about it far more eloquently than, than I could. But uh, once he did this movie Cop Out, he um, it was a studio movie, and he had a really rough experience on it, and kind of got away from him. And I think it, it I think he just, uh, I think he got very cynical about the whole process, and and um, so he retired. And Kevin's a guy that is very declarative, and and um, and so he made a lot of these declarations that I think he's now gone back back on. So like Genesis was saying, um, he 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 realized one day that he. He wants to make movies now that nobody else would make, that only he can make. And not, not, not because he's a, this is according to Kevin, not because he's a great filmmaker, but because nobody else is going to make the Human Walrus right. movie, you know, um, and, or the next movie he's doing. Uh, so he's had a bit of, um, he's had a bit of a psychological uh, epiphany the last couple of years, as well as a creative one. I actually heard Polanski shut down his Walrus movie when this. Uh, <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, it's a shame. Well, I get it. It makes sense. <laughs> what you going to do? Um, I think we have time for one more. Do we have a, a mic? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm rambling. This is... Uh, no, I, I like that. You uh, saved my <laughs> hairball moment. <laughs> well, there was a yeah. hell of a hairball. Yeah, hell of a hairball. Yeah. That's what hey. happens when you have great hair. My turn. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Hey, so I saw you had a stash in this film. Did you grow it, or is that like a clip-on? <laughs> <laughs> uh, of all the prosthetics, that's the one you're wondering Thank about? Thank you. That is the oddest one, I think, it of all the prosthetics. True. I think you're right to inquire about that. Uh, somebody asked if there was any CGI in the movie, if any of those effects, and I said, only the mustache. Only the mustache. And, it took us, and she was like, oh, really? It's movie magic. <laughs> no. Um, no, that was shockingly my own mustache. Uh, and I, I wanted to grow it uh, because, I, a couple of reasons. I, I thought, first of all, that the guy was, he, I, I'm playing, he's sort of a douchey, um, uh, co comedian. He's one of those c comedians who, like, kind of like a, you know, you hear like morning drive time radio, like, uh, hey, this is John and the Beaver Man, you know, like, I'm, there's always like the crazy guy and the crazier guy. Um, he seemed like one of those guys, one of those uh, like mean spirited comedians. Uh, and and I, he just seemed like a mustache would lend, lend itself to that kind of character, like, uh, hey, I'm, I'm this guy. And so there was that. Yeah. There was <laughs> just my own personal enjoyment in like trying to grow one. And <laughs> we, yeah, weed, um, and uh, and and I thought it might be like fun foreshadowing for when he may or may not get turned into a walrus. Because when I, this is you're gonna want to use all this. Uh, uh, <laughs> but when I grow facial hair, it's been well documented. Um, I I have very strong follicles, but I but they're but they're kind of sparse, right? So it's like I have a tweet finally. Thank yeah. God. <laughs> It was once described, I read a review somewhere, and it was run, once described as being reedy and pubic, my facial hair. Yeah, reedy and pubic, in like a publication, in a thing that like my parents could read. And, and so, and so uh, it creates this kind of like effect, this like horrifying, and I grow nothing down the middle. It's just bare. It's just like a baby's bottom right down the middle. And, um, and, and, and I noticed that walruses have the same thing, like this like, thing. Uh, theirs is probably useful for like filtering out. But you got typecast again. That's again, the... yeah. Yes. Mine was just disgusting, and um, but also I thought it might add to some of the horror of, of the movie, so it, it helped. <laughs>
It was kind of awful. Yeah. <laughs> we, we have a scene. You were, you were great ad libs. She was saying we, we, our, the scene we did, we're, we're supposed to be in bed together, and like I'm trying to have sex with her, um, as as you know, as you would, Mike. and would. Um, <laughs> as one would, uh, and. Um, she kept making jokes about my mustache, and, I always, and I'd forget that it was there. I'd be like, oh, yeah, God, gross. Who's ever going to believe? That's, that's less believable than a, a movie about a guy that turns into a walrus, is that like a guy that looked like me with that shit on his face would get a girl like that. I did question that part. Yeah, that. you're right to. <laughs> on that, guys, we are out of we time. Do one more? I feel you. bad I'm rambling. You want to do one more? Do, do, do you want yeah. one? We can do one more. What else we got? Thanks, Susan. Absolutely. Oh, there are no. Oh, more. there are no. Okay. Uh, okay. But Genesis, oh, but your yeah. mustache was completely fabricated. Uh, yes. Yes. Of and it was wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We. From the peanut gallery over here, how did you go from filming something that's fairly traumatic for your character to then being able to sleep at night, offset? Did you, Did you have any trouble sleeping? There was a lot of drinking involved, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She, she goes through a lot of, because she plays my girlfriend, and, and, and uh, she goes through a, a, a real emotional turmoil, I think as much as I do, and she's got this incredible monologue that she delivers right down the camera. Um, she's crying, and, and she did it in one take. I mean, they used the second one, but it was an incredible piece of acting, unbroken, down the camera, and it was a monologue that she got that day. And there was a lot of... Um, it was one of those movies, uh, more so than any movie I've ever done, where it felt very communal. Like, everybody was there. All the crew guys were there because they were I, really curious to see whether or not we could pull this off, whether or not it could be done, which is why I was there, why we were all there. But there were crew guys that were working on Homeland and, and like, much bigger movies, and they chose to be on, on this. And I would talk to them, and, and more often than not, they would say, well, I just kind of wanted to see <laughs> if they were, <laughs> were going to be able to do this. And so there was a lot of... Um, and they'd all get involved, and like everyone with the PAs, the electricians, they were like, man, that stuff yesterday, and the footage, and Kevin would show screen footage for the whole crew. But they didn't, they talked about her monologue more than any of the other crazy walrus stuff, and the blood, and the guts, and Michael Parks. And, 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 and the day after she did her monologue, it was like, these big grips were like, dude, you should have seen Genesis last night, crushed it. It was crazy shit, man. It was crazy. Blew my mind. Then I'd be like, well, I'm a human walrus, and like, look what happened to me. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's fine, but she <laughs> nailed it. Well, the grips blog, so that could do a lot of <laughs> They easier. do blog. Uh, but, it, but it was, I didn't have that much trouble sleeping in terms of, uh, I, I was just always so, it was such a physically, emotionally demanding thing that it, that was exhausting. So I was... You slept like a baby, I you know? slept like a baby. Had nothing to do with all the weed that was allegedly on set. Up. Yeah, no, I probably did. Yeah. I probably did that, too. Just to read between the lines on that one. On that. Thank you guys so much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you all very for much. Thanks for being here. Genesis Rodriguez, Justin Long, Todd.